What's going on guys, welcome back to another roster review. Today EA released their February roster update. I actually wasn't expecting it this early, only you know 10-15 games into the season, but a uh, good amount of changes actually to all the NHL teams. I don't think too many changes are made to other leagues, but if you guys see any big ones, let me know. Um, as always, if you want to download these, go to rosters, active roster, and click to download the most recent one, which is actually the February 10th roster. Today's February 11th that they released this, so um, kind of weird. Now if you have created players, all you gotta do is click merge roster on the custom and then uh, merge the most recent one. That's how you'll actually be able to keep your created players. I get that question all the time. Um, but for this video, I'm actually just gonna use the regular one because I'm not even sure what that custom is. It might mess with it. So I'm gonna go through all the NHL teams, guys, and show you all the player rating changes they've made. Start off with the Anaheim Ducks as always. Honestly, I think the Anaheim Ducks haven't changed too much. I saw a stat that like McDavid and Dreisel have scored more than the Ducks team combined. So um, clearly not gonna be a lot of upgrades going around, maybe even some downgrades. Speaking of, uh, Ben Hutton there's on 78, I believe before he was an 80, but uh, he got signed late uh, before the season started. David Backus might have been a 78 before, now 77, I'm not too sure on that one, but uh, really Ducks didn't change a lot. Arizona Coyotes are actually playing pretty well right now, so they've gotten some good upgrades here. Uh, Christian Dvorak, he's actually on my fantasy team. He's killing it right now. I think he's averaging over a point per game. He's down 84, up from 83. Um, high top 6, I think, might be a potential upgrade as well from medium top 6. Schmaltz got an upgrade as well. Same thing, 83, 84. He's having a really good start this year. Same goes for Connor Garland. Again, exact same thing, up from 83 to 84. Uh, you can see he's got a low top 6, Schmaltz medium, Dvorak high. Honestly, I think those potentials are actually pretty spot on. Uh, Chikrin as well, we've got an upgrade from 83 to 84. He's looking really good this year. I've been, you know, coming his tires the last couple of roster updates saying how he's a good player and uh, he's shown that so far to start this year. Clayton Keller actually got a downgrade from 84 to 83, but um, overall definitely, you know, more Arizona players there getting a bump. Just going to quickly go through the rest in case I miss anybody, but... Um, I think that is it for Arizona. Now look at the Boston Bruins here. That top line of Pasternak, Bergeron, Marchand, all still 91s. Honestly, with how good Pasternak's been out of the gate since he came back from injury, he should have definitely gotten an upgrade, I think, to at least a 92, maybe even a 93. Personally, I think he's just that good. Um, McAvoy was 86 before. Nick Rich has been playing pretty good. He got a bump um, up from an 81, I believe, to an 82. I'm um, trying to see here if anyone else got a rating change. Again, just going to show everyone in case you notice one I don't. I think that's it for Boston. Uh, Buffalo here. So uh, the first thing I'd point out is Bristol Heinen's up from an 85 to 86. He has looked good to start the season. The problem is he was already overrated, I feel, at 85. So uh, I think I usually get him down to like 83. I think right now he should be like an 84 tops. Um, Olsen got a pretty good upgrade. I believe he was 82 or 83 before. Now he's an 85. I mean, he was almost a point per game last season. He's point per game right now. But I think the thing you guys got to remember when you look at the ratings um, compared to this season, it's only been 10 to 15 games, depending, you know, on the team for these guys that they've played. And, like, you'll see later on, some of the upgrades they gave based on 10 games is a little egregious to me when, you know, the 50 games or more prior, the guy wasn't as good as these last 10 games. So I think it's okay if we get constant roster updates at least once a month, if not more. But we don't get another roster update till say, April. Doesn't really make a lot of sense. Uh, so going through here, Eric Stahl actually, I believe, um, got a downgrade. Was an 85, now an 84. Um, let's see here who else. Jeff Skinner got a big downgrade. Uh, he was an 83, I want to say, now an 80. Obviously not too great of a start to this year. Last year he didn't look too good either. The boy got paid though. 63 points, 82 games, 18, 19, 40 goals. Got his $9 million. 23 points last year. Not really doing much this year. I mean, I respect that he got his bag, but I don't know. That's one of the biggest drop-offs I've ever seen. Uh, Dylan Cousins, I believe, actually got an upgrade on the last roster update. It was a small one. They tweaked some prospects and stuff. A lot of the prospects actually mentioned he needed an upgrade, which is kind of cool to see. So he's now a 78 medium elite. I believe before he was like a 76 high top six. Uh, Casey Middlestat there, they dropped in rating from 79 to 77, but he still has the medium elite, which kind of defeats the purpose of my eyes. The rating was fine at 79, but uh, they should have made him a low elite. And real quick before I show you Calgary, Sam Steele actually dropped one from 81 to 80 on the Ducks. Uh, I just kind of remembered that. It doesn't really matter too much. You're playing franchise. He's going to grow anyways. Now on the Calgary Flames, Johnny Goudreau's up one to 88, looking like his old self. Uh, last year was a bit of a down year for him, but start up this year, he's looking really good. Only 58 points, 70 games last year. I think right now he's averaging over a point per game. I actually trade for him in fantasy. I think I gave up Bennington for him in Allmark. I thought it was a pretty good trade. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Giordano here actually dropped by one from 87 to 86. He's getting up there in age, that's fine. Lindholm's up one, he's I think a point per game or just over point per game, so that makes sense as well. Anderson's up one. I like that too, just because his contract uh, just kind of fits better. He should have been 83 to start. 
Um, looking at some other guys here, Bennett's down one, obviously just requested a trade. Manji Apani, no change, but I feel like he should be at least an 80. He's a pretty good player. Uh, Levo's down one as well to a 79. I think that's it for the Flames there. Uh, Killing Hurricane, Svechikov's up one to 87. I don't know, it's pretty high for Svechikov, but he's pretty good, so I think I'm okay with it. Dougie Hamilton, they actually boosted by one from an 85 to an 86, which is almost an insult. Like, I was saying he should be at 89, 90. Other people were saying he's way underrated. So to like go through the time to only upgrade him by one, it's like, while you're there, make him at least an 88, but whatever. Um, Slavin's still an 86, he could also be upgraded. Shea should probably have medium top four, not elite. No change to Nietzsche, but I still feel he's a little overrated there, 83 overall. Uh, if you guys like look at his career, 36 points, 64 games last year. Uh, this year he's not like going off or anything. Just compared to other prospects, I feel like he's a little bit high. Uh, Zingle dropped one from 83 to 82. Uh, I think Jake Bean, they give a big upgrade too from like a 74, 75 to 79. Basically, uh, whenever you're a prospect like that, you get some NHL games, you always get a boost. Uh, Chicago Blackhawks here, finally giving Kubelik a little bit of respect. Um, up two from 81 to 83. It's kind of a similar bump I gave him. You can see his shot there is really good as it should be. No change to Doc. I don't know why if Cousins has medium elite, they don't give Doc medium elite as well. Um, I think Connor Murphy here, they bumped one from 80 to 81. He deserves it. Pretty solid defenseman. I'm um, looking through the rest of the Blackhawks here. Alex Nylander is still medium elite, like Casey Middlesex, I think. Uh, should be a low elite player. It's kind of obvious. You know, there's a low chance of them being elite, but uh, not looking like that's going to happen. Looking at the Colorado Avalanche next here. First big upgrade to Kale McCart, now an 87 overall, which is pretty crazy for his age, 21 years old. Uh, he's actually tied with Quinn Hughes. I believe at the start of the game, Hughes was 86, McCart was 85. I said McCart should at least be 86 tied with Hughes. They gave him a little bump in the last update, which was a small one. Now they're both 87s. Honestly, though, I think you can make McCarr an 88. You could argue right now he's the best defense in the NHL. So you could even say 88's a little underrated for him. But considering his age, he's going to grow like crazy in franchise. He always does. But yeah, look at him there. He's a stud. I would honestly give him high league potential. Keep him at 87 overall. I think that's fine. But I don't know. I honestly I'd make him an 88 because Hughes is 87 as well. And I think he's just as good offensively as Hughes. But better defensively. Uh, looking at the rest of the abs here, Gerard got a plus one now in 83. Same goes for Burakovsky. I think the rest of these guys so far have stayed the same. Matt Calvert here, so I believe no change to him, but one thing I wanted to point out, uh, someone showed me this. I think it's very, very cool. So in real life, he's got a pink visor, I think, to help with like concussion problems. In game, you can see he's actually got the pink visor on him. So really, really cool. I love to see, you know, attention to detail things like that in this game. I'll love to see even more of that in the future. Um, Tyson Jost here, I believe, went down one from 81 to 80. Same with Nechushkin from 80 to 79. You can see they saw him as a sniper, even though he's one of the better two-way players in the game. Uh, makes no sense. Like, his defensive stats should be higher, and you can have his puck skills there a bit lower. Uh, Byram got a plus one, now 79. Greg Return, obviously, now on the team. I believe they trade Ian Cole for him, and I think that's it for the Avalanche. Uh, Blue Jackets, Obviously, Line is now on the team, although I think he was added with the last update. They put through the trade and also did some other small stuff, like I was saying with Makar and some of the prospects. Uh, Miku Koi was no longer on the team. Obviously, he retired. Um, let me see here. Alex Texier is now in 82. I believe it was 80 before. Roslovich now in 82. I think he was 80 or 81. Uh, Jenner, I believe, was an 80, so he got a plus one now in 81. Robinson was a 77, so plus two for him. Um, looking through here, Dean Kukin can get an upgrade maybe. I believe Foodie was like a 75 before, now a 77, so... I'm uh, going to run upgrades there, honestly, for the Blue Jackets. Look at the Dallas Stars next here. Pavelski obviously got an upgrade, plus one. Uh, he came out of the gate as the best player in the league. He was averaging more points per game than McDavid his first, like, six games or something. I picked him up in fantasy, immediately traded him. I regretted that. You can see hand either 96, nice and high as it should be. Uh, definitely deserved that plus one bump. Uh, Gurian off here. So he got a plus two eighty four, which I wouldn't mind, but I think it's a little much as Hintz is still an 83, and I believe Hintz is the better player, so... I think he should have gotten a plus one, make him an 83, tied with hints. Um, look at the rest of the Dallas Stars. I think the rest stayed the same again. Um, I'm sure I'm going to miss a couple uh, players here. Now, Detroit, this is an interesting one. Larkin's still 88 overall, now has highly potential. Larkin's literally my favorite player in the NHL. I'd say, like, tied with McDavid. <laughs> 24 88 high elite. That makes him OP. Like, in franchise, he normally grows a ton already. High elite, I think that's a bit too much. I think either 87 high elite or, like, 88 medium elite. The two together, that's just too much. Manta's also got a high elite now. Because he's 26, only one year left to grow, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, Bobby Ryan got a plus one. He had a pretty good start, even though Detroit as a whole has been, you know, pretty crap. Uh, DeKaiser got a minus one. I think Stetcher was already 81. If not, he got a plus one. Miro got a minus one. Meskov got a minus one. Um, I think that's it for the minuses, but again, uh, Detroit's, you know, been pretty... Uh, I think Mark Stahl got a minus three. I believe he was 78 before, so 
I like I was saying, we're the worst team in the NHL, basically, so can't really argue with that. Now let's get the Edmonton Oilers, guys. You might notice McDavid now has high franchise potential. Something we've been asking for since the start of the year. How does the best player in the game not have the best potential? This is actually a change that was made in the last roster update as well. Like I said, some small stuff changed. That was one of them. Dreisel is now a 93 up from a 92, which makes sense. Uh, puts him on par with Crosby, OV. Um, I think he's actually one better than McKinnon now, which is an interesting take. I think McKinnon should also be in the 93 club and McDavid honestly should be a 96 if not 97 I feel 97 for 97 would be pretty fitting nurse up to an 86 he got a plus one playing well Tyson Berry 85 uh, the last you know couple weeks he's been just going off Yamamoto got a plus one now in 83 he's looked pretty good he's continuing his point per game pace from last year um Kathman, I believe is down one I want to say it was 82 before uh, he's been okay on the Oilers, we know nothing too crazy Terse is also down one from 81 Pligrave is up one from a 78 to a 79 and I think that is it there for the Oilers. I'll look at the Panthers now. So Ekblad hasn't changed. I think he should. I think he should get upgraded to like 87. He's a pretty solid defenseman. Uh, Lundberg there should have low elites. Uh, Mackenzie Weger got a plus two from 80 to 82. It was actually Tugi who filled me in just, you know, how solid he is when he's not injured. So don't mind that. Probably should have a bit higher potential, honestly. Uh, looking at the other Panthers here. Uh, Verhey got a plus two. Well deserved. 78 to 80. I think a big reason for that is playing on the top line with Barkov and I think Duclair, but still. Uh, he's performing there. Tippett got a minus one from a 78 to a 77. I don't really like that when, like, it's already a pretty low rating. He's a young guy, but uh, whatever. And next, you guys are the LA Kings. As far as I can tell, they've only had one rating change. And you gotta love EA, because even though everyone's making fun of them for the Drew Doughty rating, they refuse to change it. He's still a 91. I mean, I don't know. He needs to not be in the 90s. Like, 89 absolute max. I think a fair rating is 87. Some people would say even lower than that, but I think 87 is fine. Uh, so the one change for them, Oli Matta down from 81 to an 80. I love that. It's like, I don't know, whoever does the rating just refuses to drop Doughty in rating. 91 overall is a little bit ridiculous. Now the Minnesota Wild here are playing really well. Definitely surprising me. So a uh, good amount of upgrades on this team. The first is actually Erickson Eck up two from 82 to 84. Spurgeon, no change. He should be 87. I think I've mentioned that in other videos. Uh, Jordan Greenway here up two from 81 to 83. Now, He's a guy who I think just got off to a hot start. He's not really known to be much of a scorer. I feel like he's definitely going to regress, but he might prove me wrong. Uh, Parise there, down 1 from 83 to 82. Um, Ian Cole now on the team. I already mentioned the return trade with Colorado. Bukestad's down 1 to an 80. I believe Benino was also an 81, down 1 to an 80. Um, looking at the rest of this team here, I think that might be it there uh, for Mr. Wild ratings. Now, next up, the Red Hot Montreal Canadiens. Another team with tons of upgrades, even more, I think, than the Wild. Uh, first one here, Jeff Petrie up one from 85 to 86, well deserved. Uh, Jonathan Duran there, no change, but he definitely should have medium top six, not medium elite. Uh, even though he's only got two years left to grow, the medium elite makes him a bit too good, I think, in franchise. Uh, Nick Suzuki, I saw a bunch of people on Twitter and Instagram asking where his upgrade was. By the way, if you're not following me on either of those, I'll have the links on screen right now. As EA didn't have a graphic for him, but he did get an upgrade. I uh, got a plus one from 83 to 84. Now, I think he should honestly probably be an 85 with... Um, high top six, if not medium elite. So um, EA definitely could have given him more of an upgrade there. Now, speaking of upgrades, Tyler Toffoli, you could argue, uh, is or not, not not argue, he is one of the hottest players in the NHL to start the season. Um, it's just undeniable. Against the Canucks, this guy plays like a 90 overall, if not a 95. Uh, the rest of the league, he plays like an 81, 82. Whoever does these ratings must be a salty Canucks fan. Toffoli did not get a change. There are guys who are doing pretty good like better than they usually do who got a plus one a plus two to Foley's <laughs> he's got eight goals in five games just against the Canucks or something like that no rating change for Toffoli I mean that's sus for sure I don't get that one uh Philip Deneau here actually dropped by two from 84 to 82 I think Canadian fans would agree with that he hasn't looked too good to start this season uh Josh Anderson up one from 80 to 81 I think he should be an 82 and I think his shot should be better than that like in Columbus, he showed he definitely can score. Last year, didn't play the greatest, got injured. Uh, he's back to his old ways. He should have, you know, a high 80 shot for sure. Physicals could even be in the low 90s. Definitely, I think should be an 82 overall player. Um, look at the rest of the Montreal Canadiens here. I think Paul Byron actually got downgraded from 79 to 78. Again, his speed. I'm honestly I don't even care about the downgrade. Just make his skating like you know at least 93 or something like that. And next you guys are the National Predators. First change is actually Philip Forsberg up one from 86 to 87. I'm fine with that. I think he's a really good player. Uh, Ryan Ellis dropped one from 87 to 86. I don't think he's doing that bad this year. He's got like five points, 13 games. I don't think he's playing that terribly defensively, but I will admit I don't watch every Predators game or anything like that. So natural fans let me know if he deserves a downgrade. 
I think it's a bit premature. Uh, Duchesne, I know, is having a bit of a rough start. He's down one from 86 to 85, so that makes sense. Johansson's also down one, 85 to 84. Uh, Granlin's up one. He's actually, you know, looked a bit better this year um, than the last couple seasons. Seasons here is down one from 81 to an 80. Um, looking at the rest of the guys here, I think that's it. Tolvanen should be a medium top six, medium lead for him. Doesn't really make a lot of sense. Uh, the New Jersey Devils here, P.K. Subban's got another downgrade from 85 to 84. Which I think makes sense. P.K.'s been on a bit of a downcline the past couple of seasons. Hopefully he can bounce back, though. Um, after that, Jack Hughes is now an 83, up three from an 80. Um, also, they're keeping his high lead potential. So kind of like Lurkin, I think that's just a bit too much, making him a bit OP. And I'll show you guys exactly why here in like 20 seconds. But uh, if Hughes is going to be 83, which I already think is high, he should have medium lead potential, no higher. And if you're going to give him high lead potential, he should be like an 81. I think either 81 high elite or 82 medium elite. To be 83 high elite based on 10 good games, I think it's a bit much. He had 20 points in 60 games last year. Um, so that means in 70 games, he has 30 points. 30 points in 70 games does not give you 83 overall high elites, even if you are the first overall pick. So that's where I have a bit of an issue. Jesper Bratt there should have higher than low top six. I think medium would be good. Uh, Miles Wood there got a plus two from a 79 to 81. Kulikov got a plus one, I believe, to an 80. Um, let me see. So this is it. Ty Smith. He was a 77 overall before, guys. And now it's 78, so they give him a plus one. And you have to remember, basically, for rating upgrades, the lower the rating, the more they can boost it without it mattering. So, say going from a 75 to an 80 is less of a jump than going from an 85 to a 90, because the higher the rating, that's just a much bigger jump, if that makes sense. Ty Smith in nine games is eight points. Jack Hughes in nine games has eight points. So they have the exact same point total to start the season, only Jack Hughes is in his sophomore year after being drafted first overall, and Ty Smith is a rookie defenseman. I mean, that makes no sense to me. Jack Hughes, eight points in nine games, plus three. Even though he's already an 80, Ty Smith, I'll give you a plus one. That's sometimes makes no sense to me. Uh, McLeod there got a plus two. He's up from a 75 to a 77, but... Yeah, I don't know that one. I can't wrap my head around it. Matt Barzell finally gets a well-deserved upgrade. Uh, I got a plus one there from an 86 to an 87. See how fast they got him here. 94 speed, 93 excel. Not bad. Uh, Nick Letty actually got a plus one, now an 85. Um, Anders Lee, I believe, was an 84 before. He should be an 85. Everly, Bailey, Nelson, they're all still 84s. Uh, with the low potential for whatever reason. Uh, Bovely, 83. Was he an 82 before? I think he might have been. Adam Pellich finally gets a well-deserved upgrade. This is a guy I've been, you know, going to bat for um, with EA. Like, he was a 78, 79 before. Made no sense as a top four defenseman. So, finally, 82. And I think he had, like, low top six potential before this. Uh, so, low top four. Why all the Islanders' potentials are low, I have no idea. Whoever does these hates them. Uh, Dobson there, 81 high top four. Um, Mayfield, though, is still a 79 high seven. So, um, they did finally uh, fix Pellich. But Mayfield, I think, should be, like, an 81... Either a high top six or a low top four. And Pellet should probably be like a medium top four. Um, look at the rest of the Islanders ratings here. I think that's pretty much all the same. But uh, at least, you know, a couple of the guys have been asking for changes. Finally got one. I just realized I missed a couple things with the Islanders guys. Both Bailey and Nelson were 85s before. I didn't realize that. They dropped to 84. So, uh, unfortunately for Islanders fans. Um, Rangers here. Zabanajad's down from 87 to 86. Uh, he's a guy on my fantasy team. Uh, he deserves the downgrade. He's had a slow start here. Uh, Truba could honestly get downgraded 84. I think, I don't know, 85 is a bit high for how he's played. Uh, Bucinovic up 1 from 83 to 84. Sangos for Adam Fox. Uh, Tony Angelo's down 2 from 83 to 81. Obviously put up a ton of points last year. This year has not looked quite as good. Kako there remains the same. Um, look at the rest of the lineup here. Jack Johnson's dropped by 1. Di Giuseppe, he's a guy I really thought could have gotten an upgrade. He looked pretty good for the Rangers. Uh, still a 76. I don't know why not give him a plus 2, make him a 78. Uh, a bit more competitive. I think that's fair. Same with a guy like uh, Julian Gauthier. 73 playing in the NHL. He should be at least a 75. Um, Ottawa Senators now. Shabaka to plus 1 to 87. Um, I think he was out of the lineup for a bit. and You saw just how bad they are when he's not playing. Uh, Dadnov got a minus 1 from 86 to 85. Uh, he definitely benefited playing with Barkov and Huberdo um, out in Florida. Next year, Derek Steppens down 1 from 83 to 82. Tim Stutzla. Up 2 to an 81. The craziest thing with this guy is, when the game came out back in October, which was what? November, December, January, February. Four months ago, but only like 10 NHL games have been played since then, plus the World Juniors. He was a 70 overall. I said I like, <laughs> he should not have been a 70. Third overall pick. Bifel was 77. Same with Raymond. Same with Holtz. He should have been at least a 77. Uh, so good to see him finally, you know, get his deserved rating. 
Look at that staff there. He's pretty nasty. He's probably growing a great player in franchise mode. Uh, Galchenyuk here actually got a minus 181, plus they dropped his potential to low elite. Although he's 26, so it doesn't matter too much, kind of like Alex Wenberg. Uh, looking at the rest of the centers here, Josh Norris got a plus one, now 79. He's playing first line center for them. He's not quite a first line center talent, but he is playing first line center. Um, Artem Zub here, I believe, is a new player added. I could be wrong, but I didn't recognize him from before. Um, centers fans, let me know. Good Branson, I think, got a minus one, now a 75. Uh, he's definitely just more of a heart and soul guy than anything else. Moving on now, guys, the Philadelphia Flyers. few upgrades for them. Uh, first here is JVR, up one from 84 to 85. Well-deserved. Looks really good here to start the season. Uh, Travis Konecki was one I wasn't sure was going to happen because he started out really good, then, you know, slowed down. I think he get benched or scratched or something uh, one game. So I wasn't sure if he's going to get upgraded, downgraded. He stayed the same, which I think makes sense when a guy's up and down, obviously. Uh, Kevin Hayes got upgraded to 84, which is nice. Uh, definitely makes his, you know, value in franchise a lot more realistic because before, with his salary, he was just worth, you know, not enough at all. Um, goes to spare, finally got downgraded. Only one, though, to 83. Still has a medium elite, although he's 27, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I would have him, like, 82, low elite. Um, just based on his usage and everything and how he's played. Uh, Farabee got a plus two, now an 82. Uh, he's definitely like a boomer bust guy if you use him in fantasy. He either gets you four points or he gets you no points. Um, other than that, I think that's really it for Philadelphia. Um, Pittsburgh here, I think only two changes I could see. So Chris Tang here got downgraded by one from 88 to an 87. I'm not sure he was playing so bad he needed a downgrade, but it's a minus one, so not a big deal. Uh, Marino here, no change to him. He's a guy I keep saying... He needs a good change. Like, you don't give a guy $4.5 million for the next six years if he's an 81 low top six. Um, honestly, Dumoulin as well should be at least an 82. He plays solid defensive game paired up with Latang. Um, Reno should be at least an 82 with medium top four. Like, he's a solid, young, potential defenseman. I don't really understand that. Uh, Masson dropped by one here from 81 to 80. Uh, he was already a little overrated anyway. So, um, that makes sense. I think that's it. Joseph, 78. Was he 78 before? I'm not sure. I think he might have gotten a little bit of an upgrade there. I'll uh, look at the Sharks now. Uh, so they have three veteran defensemen, all got a downgrade, and they all got a minus one. So Carlson was 89, now 88. Burns, 88, now 87. Um, Edward Vlasic there was 85, now 84. Obviously, Sharks not looking too good here, and they got what? 19.5 mil, 26.5 million, those three defensemen. 30, 33, and 35, respectively. Uh, a lot of people want me to do a Sharks franchise because it's just going to be such a weird one with those three, you know, anchor of a contract. Somehow they always do pretty good the first couple years. Um, but yeah, I think that might be the next one I do just because it might be fun, you know, dealing with those contracts. Also guys, before the roster update went live, I was going to upload a video today that had to do with the Pittsburgh Penguins and maybe the new hiring they made. So uh, stay tuned for that. It'll be out either tomorrow or the next day. But I just wanted to mention that for you so you don't know, have it on your radar. Next year's the St. Louis Blues. So... Uh, the Blues have looked pretty good so far this season. Uh, for them, I think the first change is actually Jordan Cairo here. Now, he got a big upgrade. I believe he was a 79 before, now an 83, so a plus 4. He is averaging almost a point per game. He's got 12 and 13. The thing is, I think this is a bit too much for me too soon. In his career, he's like 27 points in 54 games now. Um, compare him to, say, all these 83s on Tampa, like Tyler Johnson, Alex Kaloran, Andre Palat, Yanni Gord. These are all proven guys. I think every single one of these guys has had a 50-point season. Uh, Gord there at 64. I know Palat and Johnson have had 50-point seasons. Uh, Kaloran, not quite, but he's had some high 40s. I don't know. For me, 83, again, based on 12 games. Um, it's just a bit, you know, too fast of a jump. But, I don't know. It's not that crazy. I probably would have made him like an 81, maybe an 82. So they just kind of did a bit more than I would have. Uh, Sanford here dropped by 1 from 82 to 81. I thought he was a little high already, 82, so... I think that was a good change for sure. Uh, Sammy here is up by one to a, from a 79 to an 80. For some reason, he always grows a ton in franchise. I'm not sure if it's because potential, like play style, whatever, but, but definitely just a thing to look out for. You can usually get him pretty cheap and grows a ton. Uh, next year, the Tampa Bay Lightning. Sorelli's now an 84, which makes sense. Uh, I just showed you guys all those 83, so I think they're all you know pretty on par players. Sorelli's better than all of them. Honestly, Sorelli should be an 85 at least uh, with high toxic potential. He is very underrated, one of the best uh, two players in the game. Defensive stats there are pretty good, so um, I like to see that. Um, now, look at the rest of the roster. You can see Chernick here, still a 78. This guy needs to be at least an 80. I think he's a better defensive. Cal Foote's already 79. Cal Foote's played, like, 10 NHL games. He's higher rated than Chernick, who just... That makes no sense. Like, <laughs> Chernick needs to be at least an 80. Uh, sometimes, like, Logic needs to step in here. Uh, Luke Shen actually dropped in rating from a 78 uh, to a 77. 
Now look at the Maple Leafs here. They got a nice bit of upgrades, obviously playing some good hockey right now. Matthews and Marner both got a plus one, now both 91s. Uh, Tavar was 89 before, but I really feel like he should be a 90. I'm not sure when they dropped him to 89. Was it the start of the game or was it with the last like, big update? But Tavar should be a 90. I don't think there's like he ever played bad enough to drop in rating. Uh, Nylander actually got an upgrade as well from 85 to 86. Plus, I think potential upgrade. I want to see he was a medium elite before. Now a high elite. He'll definitely grow a bit faster um, in those last few years. He can grow. Brody actually got downgraded from 83 to 82. I don't know about that one. Least fans let you decide. Um, Mikhail got downgraded as well from 82 to 81. Uh, Justin Hole here stayed the same. I don't get that. He's playing really good. There's some like sort of joke tweets saying Justin Hole for Norris. I don't know about that, but he has been playing really good. Um, I think he should be an 82 overall, and I think he should have at least medium top six. He's not a seventh defenseman. He's starting on the Leafs over some you know other defenseman. He's not a seventh guy. That is for sure. Um, looking at the rest of the ones here, I think that's it. But overall, pretty good job with the Leafs. And next, you guys are the Vancouver Canucks. Even though they're playing not the greatest lately. Honestly, haven't had too many downgrades. Uh, Quinn Hughes, I already mentioned earlier on, now an 87, equal with Kale McCarr. 90 D awareness for Quinn Hughes. I, I love Quinn Hughes. I'm a Michigan fan. I just like him. He's all offense, not a lot of defense. And he's got higher D awareness than McCarr, who, like I said, Norris candidate, just as good offensively, better defensively. Alrighty. Alright, so uh, moving on. Bull Horvath's now got highly potential opposed to medium elite. I like Horvat too. I medium lead, I think, is more than good enough for Horvat. I'm not sure why they're getting him a high lead. Uh, I don't think that's needed. Uh, Travis Hamnick here dropped by 182 to 81. Um, looking at the rest of the guys here, Hogner got a plus four, 75 to 79. That's definitely well deserved. He showed he's definitely an NHL caliber player. Um, after that, Vertanen with one of the biggest drops, 82 to 78. So minus four. Um, he's got 1.12 games. Isn't playing the greatest. The thing with this is. If you think he should be an 82 two weeks ago or whatever it was, does 12 games really drop a guy's rating by four overall? Like, I honestly don't think a guy could play bad enough in 12 games for me to change his rating that drastically, but um, whatever. I think 80, a minus two would have been fair enough. Uh, ben there got a minus one as well. Look at the Vegas Golden Knights here. Uh, so most of their team has stayed the same. Shea Theodore got a plus one to an 85. He's still underrated. He should be an 87. If not 88, I'm a big fan of Shea Theodore. Uh, if you guys actually look, it was when I was doing my like team of the year research. He, I think, was the second highest scoring defenseman for the calendar year of 2020. Uh, he's also solid defensively. He's young. He did that without Petrangelo. though now Petrangelo's there, uh, which I think just giving Theodore more opportunities to be more offensive. So, yeah, uh, they give him a plus one for 84. He should be like an 87, 88 in my mind. Uh, McNabb there got a minus one. Now he's an 81. Uh, Hay got a plus one. Now a 79. Reeves got a minus one. Now a 78. I was actually looking at him. I think they might have dropped his physical stats. I'm not positive though. I shouldn't say that if I don't know for sure. But if they did, that makes no sense. Reeves physical honestly should get an upgrade, and then you can like give the downgrade to some of the other stuff. But uh, whatever. And next, you guys look at the Washington Capitals. I was actually surprised to see Backstrom Dink an upgrade. He's played really good to start this season. I thought he could be 89 tied with Kuznetsov. Um, after that, Justin Schultz got a plus one up from 83 to 84. Zeno Char there's still an 84. Um, I'm not saying he played bad or anything so far this season. I'm just saying he shouldn't be an 84. Like, that, that's too high to start out. If he was an 84, Boston brings him back. Um, I think 82 should be Char's max. Uh, after that, Eller got a downgrade, 82 to 81. And I think that is it for the Washington Capitals. Final NHL team here, guys. Winnipeg Jets. Kyle Connor got a plus one out in 88. That's their first line there. Such a sick first line. Uh, Dubois got a minus one. This is another one I think is a bit of a joke. He's played five games. At this point in the update, he played five games. I don't think he played for the Jets yet. He's one game. 1.5 games, but clearly disgruntled, clearly heading on in the game. You're going to drop him for those five games in Columbus. I think that's a bit of a joke. Um, Ehlers there got a plus one. Well deserved. Honestly, you could have given Ehlers a plus two, I think. Make him an 86. As right now, he's three lower than Connor. I do think Connor's better, but I don't think he's that much better. So... Yeah, I think Ehlers could be 86 for sure. Uh, Staff, you got a minus one as well, which doesn't make sense to me. He's not playing amazing, nor is he playing bad. He's playing pretty good. I would have kept him the same rating. Uh, Lowry caught both plus ones. Uh, same with Mason Appleton there. I think that is it for the Winnipeg Jets. You can see Vest Lion still medium elite, which is definitely an overrated potential. It should be like medium top six. And that's pretty much it, guys, for this roster update. I'll show you a few things that have changed either in this update or the uh, small last one. For instance, Connor Zary went from being a medium top nine to medium top six. Some of the more notable prospects, I feel, uh, now have a better rating. Having said that, uh, there's still some things I'd like to see changed. 
Um, for instance, well, this is actually a good change. Jeremy Drysdale is now medium elite. Why he was medium top four forever, I have no idea. They also bumped him up to a 70. What I was going to say, though, is Shane Wright here. Still medium elite, even though he's getting compared to Conor McDavid. Um, he should be a high elite. Minimum, the fact that Autu Ratu might not get drafted in the top 10, and he's got a high elite, while Shane Wright's got medium elite. Uh, that one makes no sense at all to me. Now, I saw something that I thought was pretty promising in the SHL. Uh, they finally made Alexander Holtz a sniper. So I figured if they did that, they must have made Lucas Raymond a two-way forward because they had them mixed up. But no, Raymond there, still a sniper with a three-star shot, uh, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, also, two on Lulea, I was hoping that they would have made Jester Wallstead at least medium elite. He's still a medium starter, so he could get drafted top five in the 2021 draft, and he's going to go fourth round in franchise, which isn't really the most realistic at all. But um, what are you going to do? Also, as you can see here, John Jason Paterka is still a 55 low top nine. I'm pretty sure that's what Jack Quinn was rated, which is actually funny. I should show you guys. So Jack Quinn got an upgrade in the last roster update, and they actually gave him another roster update. It was like they got so much hate for it. He's now a 69 medium top six. I believe he was like 65 medium top six last time, up from the 55 low top nine. So I thought that was kind of funny. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Like I said, this was definitely a heavy NHL-based uh, roster update, which was definitely needed. Some of the stuff I think is a little bit premature. Some stuff still needs to be done. But overall, um, I think the rosters are better today than they were yesterday. So I would give this roster update like a C plus, maybe a B minus if I was being nice. Um, I think definitely better than the last one, but uh, still some things I'd like to see change. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I'll leave that thumbs up. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that. If you're watching and not subscribed, hit that sub button. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.